Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Effectseer. Now, this actually may sound familiar, because I actually checked this guy out about a year and a half ago, and this is an amazing program. What it is, is a particle effect creation tool. It is cross-platform, it is open source, and um, you're gonna see in just a few seconds, it's also amazingly capable. So, if you're working with the particle effects for game edges, this is a standalone tool with a number of different runtimes so that might be perfect for you. So now I'm just gonna dazzle you for a little while with some eye candy. So these are some of the effects that are created using effects here. So this is just one of them. I'm gonna to switch to another one. It ships with an absolute ton of examples, by the way, you can work with. So you got your simple timeline over here, 120 frames of animation in this particular effect. And then you see a sonic boom style effect. I'm gonna keep going here. So it comes with, like I said, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of effects. So there's a special gates of something or other. I don't actually know what that's attributing to. Uh, we got some swords here, so some sword effects, and you can see in this particular case, there is a 3D object being brought into the scene that the sword effects are being applied to. And let's keep going, we'll show a couple other swords. So here's the lightning sword, this is actually pretty awesome. So here you go, a thousand frame special effects here, so you got lightning on it, swing, 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 and then... Um, and then we get lightning storm comes up from the sky, cloud effects comes down, and then lightning bolts shoot out. It, it's it kind of gives you an idea of just the sort of special effects that can be done using effects here. Uh, the performance is great, at least on my computer. You can scroll around and move around easily enough. Um, you're seeing that the composition is done over here. So we've got the blade being brought in, blade and handle. Those are 3D objects here. A number of different, so we've got ember generators, we've got thunder generators, particles, lights, sparkling lights, trackers, uh, and they kind of all go together to create these particle systems. You can see them on and on here. Each thing has its own special effects. Textures can be brought in. Lights can be handled and set up. Properties are all defined up here. On top, we've got a couple of controls in here for, we've got the render settings. And then we've got the, yeah, so there, render settings. And then we've got the basic render settings uh, available there. Up here, you can see all of the different options available. We've got sound uh, handlers over here, uh, environmental settings, cave or rotation, force fields, you name it. It's, it's an incredibly capable tool. It would actually take me a very long video to go through um, the actual um, how you use this guy, but there is also some pretty solid documentations out there. So you see, here's a simple fireball. So if you want to create a fireball effect, here's 300 frames of animation. Starts off as a simple fire, and then pew, and out it goes. You can see here again, it's a bunch of fire emitters kind of work together over timelines. And yeah, that, that's kind of how it all works. It, it's a really cool and capable program. Um, even if you just want to download it and play with some of the effects that they've created, you could do some pretty staggeringly cool particle effects using this guy. Um, I, I do recommend you check it out. If you do check it out, by the way, uh, right, right mouse button is your orbit, middle mouse button is your pan, uh, Kind of, actually, that might be all you really need to know. Um, so it's very easy to navigate around in it. Uh, there is full documentation, so there is a manual available. It's online, as you can see right here. Uh, but it will walk you through the process of creating your first thing. And you can get into some complex subjects like F-curves for animations over time. You got an F-curve editor available. It, there is so much functionality packed away in effects here. I highly encourage you to check it out. And as you can see, you do have full documentation and material references for learning effects here. So um, again, like I said, if I was going to get into doing a tutorial video on this, it would take way longer than this actual video is going to be. So this is more of a, here, this is program out there. I should recommend you go and check it out. And again, part of why we're checking it out right now is because 1.5 was just released. We're going to get into some of the new features and functionality in 1.5 in just a second. As I mentioned earlier on, this guy is completely open source. We'll see it on GitHub in just a second. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, the cool thing is it's also available on a number of different platforms. Um, so it's available in the runtimes can be run on DirectX, OpenGL, Unity, Unreal Engine 4, Cocos 2DX. Effects are available on Windows, uh, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, MScript, and, and so on. Um, so it's very, very capable in that regard. So again, there are libraries and plugins for playing it on DirectX and OpenGL, Unity, Cocos 2DX, Unreal Engine, and the DX library. So if you go back to effects here, once you're happy with your effect, really it all kind of boils down to the exports kind of come out as EFK file. So even if you save it, save as 
there, oh no, so they're slightly different. So you take the, um, when you're done, you don't export it for different engines. You basically just export it in their one format, that EFK format. And then you use one of the various different runtimes to run it in your engine of choice. Unfortunately, there is no Google runtime, uh, sorry, Godot runtime as of yet. Hopefully that gets added at some point. Uh, the cool thing also is if you're a Japanese speaker, uh, there is an effects your book out there for getting you up and going as well. So that is uh, effects your kind of a basic rundown. I will link this article down below. So if you want to check things out, they are available. Uh, there's a number of sample effects right here, but when you download it this way, it, it comes loaded. Everything we just saw comes as part of the download. So if you want to get in and kind of check it out. Those features are available there. Now, in terms of what's new in effects here 1.5, uh, we got a material editor now, a new node-based material editor uh, uh, has appeared. Uh, further expression is possible with customized materials. We've seen these node-based approaches in the past. So now you can create your um, your PBR based material using this node-based editor. Uh, there's a new tune effect sample available right there. Uh, turbulence uh, function has been added. The absolute position window has been changed to the force field window and includes turbulence parameters. So you can do things like, you know, push your particles away or so on. Uh, dynamic parameters and expressions enables you to control the effects with dynamic parameters. New format, and that's, that's what I got tripped on. Uh, the EFK EFC uh, will be used instead of the traditional EFK proj file. Um, so that's it. That's what's new in the 1.5 release. Now, a couple of these things happened since I did, I don't remember what version we were at for when I covered it last, but there's been a couple of updates, uh, including for one, the ability to run this on Mac OS. So I don't think that that functionality was there when I checked this out last time, but you know, definitely nice to see this new material editor in there. Uh, it should be available here. Uh, I do wish that ironically this was alphabetized, but Oh, no, maybe you have to get it through a material over here. So anyways, it gives you an idea of the new features and functionalities available in Effects here. Effects here is definitely one of those programs I do recognize, uh, so I recommend that you check out. You've got almost nothing to lose. It is available completely free. As you saw, it's available on macOS, available as now as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, it is open source. Um, so the code is all available right here. Um, I will link this in the linked article down below. You can see from the, uh, the timestamps, it's very actively being developed. So the last uh, the last commit was 23 hours ago here. Um, the license is MIT. So that allows you to do just about whatever you want with it. it. It kind of, you absolve them of liability, but that's about it. So there's no cost. You can use it in commercial projects. Uh, you can change the code however you want and so on. So um, it's a great project at a great price with a great source license. Uh, it, it's definitely, again, one of those ones, if you haven't checked out Effects here in the past, I highly recommend checking it out. And again, if you go into open, you're gonna find under the samples directory, there's a ton of different samples available there. Uh, kind of walks you through all the various different things you want to know and need to learn about and so on. Uh, so I do recommend uh, checking those out. You can start with some simple effects that kind of work your way up. Uh, there is great documentation available for you. So if you want to learn effects here, uh, the tools are out there. I believe there are some tutorial, video tutorials as well. Uh, as well for learning it. Um, so yeah, Effects Zero 1.50 was released. This is a great tool that you should definitely consider adding to your toolbox. Now I know a lot of the game engines, uh, especially since this started, especially the likes of Unity and Unreal, have added more and more advanced particle uh, control tools, things like Niagara and um, Unity has I'm uh, not remembering Unity's name, but they both have their own dedicated particle creation tool at this point in time. But I find them actually more complex. So anyways, this is Effects here, and if you're working with something like Coco's 2DX, DirectX, or OpenGL, great option for adding particle capability to your own custom game engine or your uh, Coco's 2DX game. And again, there are Unity and Unreal Engine runtimes. So that's it. That is Effects here, version 1.50, now with the new node-based materials. Uh, 1.40 added macOS support since I last talked about it. Definitely a, a tool I recommend that you check out. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.